Father, yes, for a word of prayer. Father God, we come in now just saying thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, thank you for allowing us to make it to your house one more time, Lord. Lord, allow this word to open up in our hearts, Lord. As we study your word, as we still may remain faithful to you, Lord. Lord, even in this time in the environment that we're in right now, this COVID-19, Lord, we ask that you have, keep a hedge of protection around us, Lord. Protect us, guide us, and keep us, even when we're maybe in fear right now. But, but we know that you did give us that spirit of fear, that we remain faithful in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Go put your hands together. Amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands in. Come on, come on, put your hands in. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Amen. Once again, the book of First Samuel, chapter 27, verses 1 through 12. Come on, put your hands together. Come on. Lesson title tonight, Find a Security in an Unsafe Place. Let me pray again. Father God, once again, we say thank you. God, we thank you for this opportunity to spend time with your word. God, we thank you for what you do in our life. God, we thank you for whatever amen situation is going on now. You realize that you will still get the glory in the end. We ask God all in your son, Jesus' name, and all of God's people say it. Amen. 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 Look at the introduction. Look at the introduction. It says that when soldiers are trained for battle, they are taught how to survive in an unsafe place or situation. They are trained to fight their enemy and to, and to defend themselves. The Bible says that as long as we are in this world, Christians are in, in an unsafe place because we are constantly fighting our enemies, the devil, our flesh, and the world. Amen. Someone can read Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11, 13, and 1 John 2, 16. Deacon Harris. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Yes, sir. For we wrestle not against the flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Amen. Look, we, we are taught not to search for the security in this unsafe place. Look at Psalm 146, verse 3, and then Psalms 20, verse 7. He can back. Amen. Put not your trust in prince, nor in son of man, in whom there is no help. Psalms 20. Verse 7, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord, our God. Amen. So in our lesson tonight, we find David to be in this unsafe place. We will, we will see how David goes about finding security in this unsafe place. Amen. So I want to read verses 1 through 4, Deacon Johnson. And David said in his heart, I shall now perish one day by the hand of Saul. There is nothing better for me that I should speedily escape into the land of the Philistines, and Saul should despair of me, to seek me any more in any coast of Israel. So shall I escape out of his hand. And David arose, and he passed over the 600 men that were with him unto Achish, the son of Maok, king of, king of Gath. And David dwelt with Achish at Gath. He and his men, every man with his household, even David with his two wives, Ahinamon, the Jez Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the Carmelitess, Nabal's wife. And it was told Saul that David was fled to Gath, and he sought no more again for him. Amen. Thank you, God. Amen. The first thing we see, we see the motive. Somebody shout motive. In these verses, then, we see David's motive. The text tells us that fear of being killed by King Saul caused him to what? Escape. Shot escape. Escape. Escape to the land, amen, of the Philistines, who were enemies of Israel. Now, even though David was anointed as the future king of Israel, had the promise of God, and fearlessly defeated the giant Goliath, here we find him sunk into a desperate, into desperate and into fear. Amen. So I want to get 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 13. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 13, real quick. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 13. When you get it, just read there real quick, somebody. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 13. Anybody got it? Yes, I have it. 
It says, Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from the day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Amen. So we see David being anointed. But even though he was a king, he still had fear. Which tells me sometimes, Trey, even though we're up, the devil don't get nothing our position. He'll bring fear into our life. Now, 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 what caused such contrasted behavior by the anointing one of God? It is when he started to focus on his situation, fear overruled the faith in the army of God. He, he took his faith, amen, off of Jesus, amen? Look, 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 look. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. Anybody got that 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7? Somebody real quick. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. So God has not given us the spirit of fear. But church, fear will lead us to a defeat. But, but, but there's a difference between defeat and retreat. There's a difference now. See, sometimes when you ain't got no wins to help somebody, you are locked up and leave. Amen. You see, every argument are not turned into a physical fight. Sometimes you got to be big enough just to walk away. Somebody shout, walk away. Walk away. Right. Look, 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 the Bible states that the focus of our lives should be on the invisible, the spiritual, where Christ is seated. Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. Deacon Powell. Colossians chapter 3, uh, verse 2. S set your afflictions on things above, not on things on the earth. Amen. Amen. In tough times, we should train ourselves to only glance at our problems while gazing at Christ. Y'all missed that. Only, only glance now uh, at our problem, but gazing at Christ. Amen. And there's a difference between a glance and a gaze. Help me somebody. Help me, brother. You help me preach this time. Look, look, look. There's a difference between a glance and a gaze. It's called time. You see, 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 when I was in college, hey, amen, I'm working, I'm messing the way up, but I should have glanced, but when I gazed, I fell in a little. Help me somebody. Help me, help me. Look, 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 see, you got to stay focused or you find yourself going down. I got some Bible to back it up. Somebody go to Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 30. That's Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 30. And straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and go before him with unto the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, there he was there all alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, Is it a spirit? And they cried out for fear. But straightway, Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, Bolstrous. He was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. Amen. So notice, notice, as long as Peter was focused on Jesus, he was up. It's when he began to glance at his surrounding, he went down. So here's the moral story. If you keep your eyes on the Lord, he's able to keep you up in the midst of a storm. Amen. Look, the text states that David the well with Agish. Agish was the king of Gath. Other than the fact that we are going to rely on an enemy, David was going to land where, where I got going to a land where idolatry was practiced. Just like a ship belongs in the water, but the water does not belong in the ship. We ought to be in the world, but the world should not be in us. Yeah, yeah. Somebody go to Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. Somebody just read it. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, Beseech ye, beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. 
and not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So do, do not be conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed by the renewing of your what? Your mind. How many know the mind is a terrible thing to waste? Look, 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 look. The Bible teaches that friendship with the world is enmity with God. Somebody got James chapter 4, verse 4? James 4? Yea, adulterers and adulteresses. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Right. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Oh, Notice now, David did not go to Gath alone. He had 600 men and his family with him. This right. teaches us that our action will affect others. So you have to be careful what you do because your actions can, uh, can affect others around you. Now, for example, when Peter stop associating with the believing Gentiles, it, it caused Barnabas and the other Jews to follow Peter, which led to confusion. Somebody said confusion. Within the body of Christ. That blank should be confusion in the body of Christ. Look, look at Galatians chapter 2, verse 13. Anybody got that? But read verses 11, 12, and 13. Galatians chapter 2, verses 11, 12, and 13. But when Peter was come to an Antichrist, I withstood him to face because he was to be blamed. For before the serpent came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they, they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of circumcision. And the other Jews disassembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. Amen. So let me tell you what's going on in this text. Right here, Peter, amen, was, was hanging out with the believing Gentiles. Amen. Keep in mind, the Jews don't eat pork. So what he was doing, he was hanging out eating pork chop. Come on, somebody. Bacon and pickle pig feet. So when the Jews showed up, he tried to separate himself. And then Paul faced him and said, and told him, if you're going to be a Jew, be a Jew. If you're going to be a Gentile, be a Gentile. Whatever you're going to be, you got to be what you are. See, you can't be a stumbling block to people. See, if you're not careful, we'll call folks to stumble along the way. Amen? Amen. Look, look, look. Here's the question each of us need to ask ourselves. Is there a wide gap between our lips and our life? See, it's not how high you jump when you shout, but how straight you walk when you come down. Preach that thing, somebody. Look, 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 look. This behavior of David is recorded for us not for imitation, but for our amination. Amen? Amen? Look at verses 5 through 6. Deacon Johnson. And David said unto Achish, If I have now found grace in thine eyes, let them give me a place in some town in the, in the country, that I may dwell there. For why should thy servant dwell in the royal city with thee? Then Achish gave him Ziglag that day. Wherefore Ziglag pertained unto the kings of Judah unto this day. Amen. Amen. Next thing we see, we see move. Somebody say move. move. Say move. move. Amen. Here, here. We read that David humbly and diplomatically, diplomatically conveyed to the king of Gath his desire to move from Gath to another city. Amen. Now, why did David want to move? This was so that he could be free from the constant surveillance, surveillance and avoid the pagan influence. Amen. He, he was in a place where the enemy could see him and David wanted to move. Hear me somebody. The world is always watching us. That's why while we are in the world, I'm not talking about inside the church, but when you're outside the church wall, you got to be careful how you live because you're always under surveillance by the enemy. Amen? Look, 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 look. David, David had favor. Somebody say favor. David had favor on his life even when he was wrong and chose to dwell with the enemy. Achish accepted the idea and gave David the city of Ziklag. When we accept Christ, we are given divine favor as well. I have no favor ain't fair. Come on, somebody. Favor ain't fair. But every believer got favor on their life. Look, look, look. But with the blessing come responsibility. Hear me now. With every blessing, there comes responsibility. We should never take our grace for granted. See, church, sometimes we push the limit on grace. Amen? We say crazy stuff like, God knows my heart. 
See, when we want to mess up and get by, we always say, God knows our heart. I, I stop by the tell you, God knows our heart. He knows our feet, our arms, our legs, and our fingers. Come on, somebody. He made us. We were created in his what? image. Somebody go to Romans chapter 6 and verse 1 and 2. Romans 6, 1 and 2. Reverend Joseph. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? So, so Paul asked the question. He said, should we live in sin? No. Sometimes we take grace for what? Grant. Look, look, look. We need to follow God's ways all the time and not falter because of our, of our circumstances. Amen? Not falter because of our circumstances. Remember now, worry looks around for solutions, but faith looks up for divine direction. Well, y'all, 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 a shout out there. I said, worry looks around for solution. Amen, amen. But faith looks up for divine what? Direction. Somebody go to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Then someone gets Psalms 121, verse 1 and 2. Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6. And someone gets Psalms 121, verse 1 and 2. That Psalms? That Proverbs? Read Proverbs. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Amen. 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 Psalms 121, 1 and 2. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence come my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heavens and earth. Thank you, God. So here's the point. Let God lead us as we look towards our help. How many of our help come from what? The Lord. Amen? Look, 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 look. This town, Ziglag, was 25 miles southwest of Gad that had been previously on an Israelite possession, but was now under the Philistine control. Since the king gave Ziglag to David, this city has belonged to the kings of Judah until this day. Amen? The Lord taught our Lord is teaching us that if the people of this world grant a desire, how much more will our lovely heavenly Father grant that which we ask of him according to his will? Somebody read Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 through 11, David chapter. Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Well, what man is there of you, whom if son ask bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask fish, he will give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Amen. So he said, ask, he'll give it to us. Amen. But we have to be doing all the right things to get what we want from our father. Yeah, that's right. No good parent, amen, will give you when a child is taken out. But when you behave right according to his will, his way, his word, God will what? He will bless us. So when we have a need, make it known to him because he already knows it and is waiting for us to verbalize it to him. See, we got to verbalize it to the Lord. We got to open up our mouth and say what? Something. See, open up our mouth. I got some Bible. Look, somebody go to Psalms 107, verse 2, and then someone get to Hebrews 13, 15. Psalms 107, verse 2, and then get to Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. Who got Psalms? Hebrews. You got Deacon Mike got Psalms, and uh, Deacon and, uh, Herb has Hebrews. Read Psalms 107, 2. It says, Let the Redeemer of the Lord say so. Whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Amen. Let the redeemed, if you've been saved, sanctified, you gotta open up your mouth. I know waving your hand is good, but you gotta open up your mouth. Bear witness to the truth. Hebrews 13, 15, Deacon her. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is, the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. Look, look. Open up your mouth with your lips. We praise God with our mouth. Once again, clapping your hand, stuff your feet is good. But God wants you to open up your mouth. The only way we can say hallelujah is with our mouth. Somebody shout hallelujah with your mouth. Amen? Amen. Look, look, look at verses 7 through 12. We almost done. Verses 7 through 12. In the time that David dwelt in the country of the Philistines was a full year of four months. And David and his men went up and invaded the Gershorites and the Gerzerites and the Amalekites, for those nations were of old, the inhabitants of the land. 
as thou goest to Shur, even into the land of Egypt. And David smote the land, left neither man nor woman alive. And he took away the sheep, and the oxen, and the asses, and the camels, and the apparel, and returned and came to Achish. And Achish said, Whither have ye made a road today? And David said, Against the south of Judah, and against the south of the Jeremites, and against the south of the Kenites. And David saved neither man nor woman alive to bring tidings to Gath, saying, Lest they should tell on us, saying, So did David, and so will be his manner all the while he dwelleth in the country of the Philistines. And Achish believed David, saying, He hath made his people Israel utterly to abhor him. Therefore, he shall be my servant forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. The next thing we see, we see the method. Somebody shout method. method. We see the method. Amen. We see the method used by David for warfare and survival while he lived in an unsafe place. We read that for 16 months, he was able to deceive what? Achish. Concerning his what? Actions. That when asked by the king, David gave false reports of his actions. And Achish, Achish would believe him. The king thought that David and his men were attacking the towns of Judah, when in reality, David was raiding the people who lived in the southern Canaan, amen, and North Sinai. David was wiping out the people Joshua and his successors had failed to exterminate when they entered the promised land. See, Joshua didn't do the job, so David began to do his job. See, church, when God tells us to do something, we got to do it like it's our last job on this earth. We got to give God our best, amen, while we can, amen? Look, look, look. Go to Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. Then someone get 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. Colossians 3, verse 17, and then 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Who has Colossians? Colossians 3, 17? Did you get mine? Colossians 3, 17? No, I got 1 Corinthians. Hey. Reverend Johnson, Colossians? Get Colossians. Read Colossians, EJ. Read me, 317. And whosoever ye do in the word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Give thanks to God and the Father by him. Amen. First uh, Corinthians 10, 31 says, Whether therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Amen. So what do we do? Do it for the glory of God. And when you do it for the glory of God, you can't tell somebody they using me. How they using you if you're doing it for God. If you say God is your rock and the weary land, he's the first of your life, you ought to do it for God. Amen. You don't need nobody to pass you in the back and do what God had called you to do. Amen. Look, 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 look. Did David, amen, David made sure that no survival was left out of his invasion. Who could take the world to God that David was a liar? Listen to me, somebody. David was able to fool Achish, but not who? God. Even though David was successful in stopping Saul's pursuit, he's now living a life of deception and under the fear that his lie will be what uncovered. He was living a lie. Amen? And how many know a lie would never die? Or wish I had some help, somebody. I said a lie would never die because you got to keep telling it over and over and over again. And if you're not careful, sometimes you'll mess up. I thought you had a red shoe. Now you got a blue shoe? A lie comes about it would never would die. Amen? Look, if that were to happen, he would have more and more enemies to run from. If we run from one problem, we must make sure that we do not run into another one. Amen? It was going to take faith and patience on David's part to receive what has already been promised to him. Look at Hebrews 6.12. Anybody got that? Come on, you did That ye be not slothful, but the followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. And so be patient, ye yeah, would inherit what? The promise. Look, the Bible records others like Moses and Elijah who had discouraging moments in their spiritual walk. Numbers chapter 11, verse 13, and someone get 1 Kings. Chapter 19, verse 4. Who got, who got Numbers 11, 13? E.J. Uh, Deacon Herb. And then someone get 1 King 19, 4. Deacon Lion got 1 uh, King 19, 4. Read Numbers 11, 15. Deacon Herb. And if thou deal thus with me, kill me. I pray thee out of the hand, if I have found favor in thy sight, and let me not see my wretchedness. 
First King 19 4. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, it is enough. Now, Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father. My Jesus. Here we have Moses and Elijah. Both can feel sorry for himself. And Elijah want to commit suicide. See, sir, church, the pressures of life will cause you, come on, to end it all. See, if you're not careful, see, the true test of a man is how he or she deal with adversity. See, the devil will throw a rock. Come on, somebody. So you still got to push through in spite of. Amen? Look, look, look. A lot of us walk around talking, oh, it's me. I often tell somebody, it's always somebody doing worse than you. Hear me, somebody. It's always someone doing worse than us. Look, when we start to look at God through our circumstances, instead of looking at God through our, through our circumstances, through God's eyes, we will see defeat, lost faith, lose faith, patience, courage, and the enemy will triumph over us. Proverbs 3, 5, heard one more time. Proverbs 3, 5, it says what? Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. Amen. Trust in the Lord with all our heart. Lean not in our own way. And now that he would direct what our path. Look, therefore, when we are caught in tough situations, Let's remember that God has our tomorrow covered even though we have not yet seen it. Come on, somebody. God has our tomorrow already covered. They don't need to get upset. He has what? Provision. And the word pro, amen, profit, he see beforehand. Before it comes, it's already there. Amen. God has it all. Amen. Look, God was using the difficult times in David's life to prepare him to be the king of Israel where he would be constantly in conflicts and wars. See, even though David was going through what he was going through, it really was a, uh, what you call it, what you, what you call it, boot camp. David was really a boot camp. And, and what we're going through now is a boot camp. God has just prepared us for what he already prepared for us. Y'all understand? God has just prepared us for what he has already prepared for us. He said, if you can't deal with diversity, if you can't deal with a lack of sound, preach that thing, Pastor Webb. How are you going to deal when the church goes to be a mega church and decide to go out? I wish I had some help, somebody. Look, 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 look. If we allow God to order our steps in trouble times, we can find security in an unsafe what, places. Here's the deal. So here, here's what I'm trying to teach tonight for somebody. Even though that the clouds may come, rain may fall, we can always find security in the arms of God. As we bring to a close, as we bring to a close, as the deacon line will come down as lead us in prayer, as we come down for a word of prayer, as we bow our heads, our heads are bow, our eyes are closed, as we come down for a word of prayer, and our eyes are closed, as deacon lines come and closes out in a word of prayer. Amen. As it come. Deacon lines as it come. Amen. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. As our dear deacon will come and lead us in prayer. Deacon Lyons. Father God, once again, the humbly we come before you. Yes, sir. Just thank you for another opportunity. Thank you, thank you for another day's journey. Yes, sir. Don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but we thank you for the day. Yes, sir. Thank you, Father. Lord, and whatever happens tomorrow, we know that you will give us whatever we need to stand. Yes. So we thank you right now, Lord. Yes, Lord, we continue to pray for this, this world and the, the problems that we're having right now yes. with this coronavirus. But Father, we know that you're bigger than that. Yes, so we know that you'll take care of it, Father. Yes. Sooner or later, it will leave. Yes. So we thank you right now, Lord, for what you're getting prepared mm -hmm. for us to do. Thank you for this man of God who taught this word yes. tonight. Yes. Lord, we're just so grateful and, and we, we needed to hear it. Yes, sir. As he continually encouraged all of us. Yes. Lord, we pray that those who was able to see it, yes. Father, they found a blessing in it. Yes. And that they can tell somebody about a living God in this dying world. Yes. And we put all our trust and our faith in you. Yes. So we thank you right now. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we ask you to continue to bless this church, yes. all the members of this church. Yes.
that we be able to come back together again this morning. Oh, my yeah. But until then, Lord, we still going to praise your holy name. Yeah. Every chance we get. Yeah. If you wake us up, we'll praise you. Yeah. So we thank you right now, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, we're going to be mindful to give you all the honor, yes. the glory, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Come on, put your God up in the Once again, we thank you for tuning in to our Bible study. We see you next Tuesday night, same church, same time, from the same pulpit. May God bless you, we pray.